Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. Um, I really appreciate you guys over over this like a twelve year journey, just supporting me and doing all that. I really appreciate it. Um, today I'm going to talk about living a teachable life. Um, I was thinking the other day about not just being uh, teachable, like, like we always hear, being able to learn and from your mistakes and from your successes and whatever, um, having God and others be able to teach you, but I was my brain was even taking it a bit further um living a, about living a teachable life living a life where people can learn from you um good things and i began to think that wait a minute people are always learning from your life, the question is, what are they learning? Whether you want people to watch you or not, they are watching you. And as a believer in Jesus Christ, what are they learning from your life? And we all struggle, and I struggle, you struggle. But what are they learning from those struggles, like especially those around you? When they see you go through, um, what are they learning on how to go through? And how to go through, do you go through with victory? Do you go through with, um, a resilient attitude or do you just flop into negativity and oh this will never get better and yes uh we shouldn't base our lives on what people think that's true but at the same time we should use our lives as ministry like know that everything in our lives can be a ministry opportunity if we just let it. When I think about the life of Jesus and how he lived his life, everything in his life was um, an act of ministry. He would use the smallest things, the greatest things to minister to people to help people, to, to, to illustrate concepts that were hard to grasp. Um, there were, there were many times when Jesus would take a mustard seed and talk about the mustard seed. Uh, he used the fig tree. He used the olive, um, he used even little children to to talk about the kingdom of God, like these lofty concepts. And I was thinking the other day, um, like the Lord said something interesting to me. To me, um, one day He said, He said, when He said. When you read the Bible now, because you've been reading it for years, Rachel, he says, I don't want you to look at so much what I did, but I want you to look at how I did it. And I said, what do you mean? He said, he said, there is a structure to how I did things. So when 
you read the Bible. Don't look at so much what I did, but look at how I did it. He said, when you look carefully at the Gospels, and you, you, the whole entire book, but especially the Gospels, you could pick out the issues of the day. You could pick up one of the issues were poverty. Another issue, another issues were, um, were, Or sex and prostitution. Another one of the issues were was tax collecting and fishing and how they lived. And without looking at what I did, without looking at what I did, you could see what the number one issues are of the day. And he said so many so, so that's how I used the issues to teach because I tackled the issues of the day and taught people from what they do. And he's like, today, also what I did is important. It's a baseline. But, but look around at your world and see what the issues are and then tackle them on today's terms. So he's like, many preachers and um, ministers are so focused on what I did, the fact that I feel by dies, the fact that I did all of this, they're not really focused on how I did it. He's like, what I need you to do is not really focus on what I did, but how I did it and tackle the issues of your day in the same way I did using the issues of your day and bringing answers and, and solutions to the problems of your day. So instead of, I don't know why I'm going here, this is totally off my sermon. So instead of talking about, let's say, fig trees and, um, and uh, farming analogies, I need you to talk about texting and Instagram and I need you to use those as tools uh, for my glory. And I said, wow, He's, he said, that is the way we're going to win the world. If we use, and he also said something to me years ago. He said, use what they know to teach them what they don't. So he said to me years ago, use what they know to teach them what they don't. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? He said, they know texting, they know Instagram, so use that. He said, he said, you know, we're always telling people not to text in church. We're not not to use their phones in church. But he's like, but if there's a way they can use their phones and text messaging for my glory, why not? I said, what do you mean? He said, why not while you're preaching, have a board in front of, not a board, but a computer thing, in front of the pulpit and get people to comment and text uh, to interact during the sermon. I said, during the sermon? 
But we already do that with chat. He said, no, in the church. And I said, what? And, well, they're already doing it anyway. Engage with them on a level that they know. He said, this is a different stream. My word never changes, but the stream will change. And in order to have a, a teachable life, a life that, that people can learn from, they need to be able to be taught my word on their terms. So if they like texting, fine, incorporate that into the service. And I said, I sat back and went, what? <laughs> and you don't want to know what I said, guys. And I said, okay. I said, but I don't have a trip. He's like, well, use what you do have. But that was, that was an example. Uh, when you do, when you do set up a formal ministry of what I want. He said, bring my word to them in a way that they could understand. Don't try and do it the way the, the, um, the way other people did it, because the way other people did it is not working for this generation. Bring the same word, but use different ways. Of doing don't copy what I did so much but how I did it and that's how you'll win the world and that that made me think of living a teachable life used someone using their life to be um, to teach people about God some someone using their life to teach people about grace, to teach people about love, to teach people about all that stuff. And I was like, okay, this is something to think about. <laughs> so the Lord wants me to say, not only be teachable, be not a be able to be taught, but be be available to have a teachable life and know that people are watching and he's given us life to not only enjoy but to be of service to him and he's given us life to also um to also give other people life so what when i see say give other people life i don't mean have babies well that's one form of it but i mean emotional life i mean emotional support like you know many of us have friends we know that they're struggling um but we don't say anything we just let them struggle and the Lord's saying teach them through your life what compassion is show compassion show grace and if God calls you to um, bring correction in a way that he would want you to bring correction only if you're close enough to that person to do so. I, I believe he wants to do so much, but I think that I think the church needs to be taught um, ministry again and how to minister effectively in this generation. I think I don't think you're utilizing the tools as we should. Because I was thinking of this the other day. 
Um, too. I think a lot about this stuff. So, I was thinking, instead of complaining about Instagram and TikTok, um, uh, why can't we every hour on the hour have someone from our churches come on Instagram, come on all those social media, and bring an encouraging word. Not just on Sunday, but every day for about five, every hour for about five minutes. It could be called Take Five. And every hour for about five minutes, someone comes on, brings an encouraging word. People, if all the churches in Toronto or wherever your city is in got together and just decided to do that on one social media platform every hour for 24 hours, social media would change. That platform would change. I believe that we would come to see people in... Uh, I believe it would be countless the people that would come to Christ if we would do that. But we're so focused on what was done, but we're not focused on what he is doing. I think the um, pandemic was, was a very scary moment, but at the same time, if we had taken advantage of it, it was a very pivotal moment where we could have changed things, but we can't go back in the past. But we need to move forward. And we need to understand that ministry way back then is not ministry now. And, and I think it has to be more than putting up shorts and videos. I think it's that's the least we can do. But I think God is showing me that we can, we can, if we can in, invade the social media space and not just put up videos every couple days or every out, like, or every Sunday or whatever, but if we can be on there uh, 24 hours a day, not the same person, different people just giving five minutes of encouragement or on TikTok, two minutes of encouragement an hour, we'd be able to, ch to change the trajectory of social media. And I'm saying, not one church, I'm saying different churches getting together to do this. It would be so amazing and awesome. And I, I believe that um, God is calling for the visionaries to rise. He's calling for the, uh, for the visionaries to stand and say, this, this is what God is speaking. He's calling for the people of Issachar who see, who see what, what's to come or, or what's going on to rise and speak his word. There are, there are, um, people that are sitting in the pews right now with so much word in them, but they're too afraid in the Lord saying, come out, come out. You're seeing things differently, not because you're strange, not because of whatever, but because I've called you to see things differently. I've called you to do ministry on a different level. He's saying, I've called you not only for your life to be teachable, but I've called you to do ministry on a different level. And that's why you're having such a hard time. 
That's why you feel antsy and kind of out of place. And don't let your, um... Don't let your character flaws stop you. And, because there are all kinds of things in character and stuff that God is working out. But don't let that stop you. Don't let even your sin stop you. He'll work that out if you surrender it to him. But he's called you as a, as a giant in the kingdom to tear down kingdoms. To destroy yokes. To, to be the hands to help him to set people free. And, um, I want you to rise up and take your place in the kingdom. Um, he's called the church to suffer violence. We've been to uh, 1990. He said, said the kingdom suffers violence and the violent take it by force so what does what the question that we need to be asking is how in this day and age do we take the kingdom by force one of the ways that i believe in this day and age that we take the kingdom by force is social media, Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok. And I'm not saying just putting up videos every couple days and doing shorts. Um, I'm saying to take it over. I'm saying every hour on the hour, 24 hours a, a day, someone coming on with an encouraging word or with with a word that God is saying. I'm saying why why does church all only have to be on Sunday? I'm saying to take it over. I'm serious. I'm saying take it over. I'm saying at least two or three churches come together and have services every day. Every day. Like, I'm serious. And different pastors could be preaching and different ministers could be ministering. And I see so much that it, it drives me crazy at night because I'm like, why are you showing me this? I have no power. No power for this. He's like, speak it, Rachel. Just speak it. Don't worry about how it's gonna get done. Just speak it. So yes, Lord, I'm speaking it. Like, see, we have had this mentality for so long that church has to be on a Sunday or Saturday. We meet every six days. We do, we do two songs of worship, and then we do this, and we do two songs of worship, and or 45 minutes to an hour of sermon. The Lord didn't say that. Somebody set that up, and we just followed it. It's time for us to break out of the box of tradition and mediocrity and stop talking about how bad social media is and change it. If you don't like it, change it. And I just see so much. My head's, my head's crazy most most nights because I'm up saying, wow, what are you doing? Why isn't anybody grasping this? He said, because people are not still 
to hear me. And number two, they're stuck in what they think ministry is. They think churches. They think I want. They never stop to ask me what I want. They, well, like he said, I asked him, I said, I said, what do you mean? He said, in the pandemic, churches were so focused on getting back to church again, getting back to church again, that they weren't asking, what can we do differently in this time to advance the kingdom? And he said, if they had, I would have had them change the whole thing. I, okay, one day in the pandemic, I was watching, I was in church and what, um, he had asked a question. The pastor I was watching had asked a question and people were answering and answering. I was like, the TV. I was like, look up, they're answering. And the Lord says, the, I can, <laughs> oh God, help me. The Lord says, it's, we, we don't put the Bible down. He's like, the Bible is the base. The Bible is the starting point. But he's like, it's not the end. What I said to a youth leader one time, I said, you need your Bible in one hand and a newspaper in the other or an online screen in the other. We, we need issues that our people are facing. I hear on podcasts every day, Dr. Phil tackling issues, Oprah tackling issues. All these people are talking about issues. Hoda and Jenna tackling issues. All of the, the, all of these people tackling issues and the church pastors and all of those people are saying nothing about these issues, but people are dying for truth, for answers to these issues. And you know what? We have the answer. But the thing is, we're too scared and limited in our thinking to think that church has to happen like this and we have to do this every six days. No, we don't. We've just been programmed that. And he's saying it's time for us to open our minds uh, to have teachable lives, not only lives, but in our ministry. And know that every moment that we walk outside is a moment for somebody to be taught and to find grace and to find um, the truth. He said every moment of our lives, uh, whether you're a pastor, whoever you are, as long as you're a believer in Jesus Christ, is a moment that somebody could be taught, that somebody could be rescued, that, that someone could be found. He said every moment is a teachable moment and we need to understand how teachable our lives are and we need to understand that this is not a game we need to understand that this is not uh something to play around with there there are people's lives at stake here and um i i sometimes ask myself Rachel, why do I get up every Sunday and do this? Uh, or periodically I may, I may come up um, other days too if the Lord gives me a word. Um, and I say I do this because at any moment 
someone can see one of my videos and get rescued from hell or even just get encouragement or instruction so that's why I do this and I understand that my whole life is an opportunity to minister to someone to help someone to serve someone you know my whole life is that way so we often think that acts of service is, or when you're you're serving in ministry or whatever or helping in the homeless kitchen or whatever no acts of service are anytime you're serving your kids or anytime you do things that work that you're not supposed that you're not paid to do but you just do them because uh, you want to show God to your co-workers acts of service can be anything so you don't have to be a pastor to serve the kingdom you can be a school teacher and serve the kingdom because you're ministering to those mo to those little little minds that you're teaching in the classroom you can be, in, be a construction worker and serve the kingdom because you're building a building that will serve your community like i think we need to change the way we think of ministry and we think of service because the lord wants to do so much more if we are open to it and he wants us to be open to it because he wants the world to all know him but we need to stop doing it on our terms and how we do it and find out um how 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 they would best respond to it um and i said okay and I thought, this is just so incredible. And now my mind started exploding with different and different ways that the Lord is uh, showing me. And I will keep telling you and uh, teaching you as he teaches me. And I'm so, I'm so grateful to what he's, for what he's doing. And I'm just open to what he's going to do. <laughs> and it's just amazing to me. So guys, I will see you next week. Take care. Bye.